Hello. All right. We're just going to wait a couple seconds, see if anyone's going to join us. Some time. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Junior Adventurers this week. Uh, my name is Ansys Kanick. I'm the digital education intern this summer. Today, we are going to learn about one of Maine's uh, most well-known photographers and then learn some photography skills ourselves. Um, I want to thank our members and those who choose to donate to our programming at the Penobscot Marine Museum. For more information about upcoming speakers, membership, and donating can be found on our website and on our Facebook page. Um, so throughout the program, please share your comments and questions by posting in the comments section below. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, all right, we're going to get going. All right, we're going to start off with meeting a main photographer. Good. This is Kosti Rohoma, a main photographer who lived in Rockland on the Penobscot Bay. His parents were immigrants from Finland and ran a blueberry farm where Kosti grew up. He discovered his artistic side when he was young and eventually became a famous photographer. He took thousands and thousands of pictures during his lifetime um, and our museum holds 45,000 of his images. Uh, we'll put a link to our digitized images from the Costi collection in the comments so you can explore them later. Uh, they're really fascinating. Uh, so let's take a look at some of his photographs to get inspiration and learn a few photography techniques ourselves. All right, up first, we have um, animals. And as, actually, as we go through the pictures, think about what you find interesting and what things you would wanna try capturing with your camera. So these are all examples and, and think about what resonates with you as we go through. Um, so with animals, you can try taking a picture of uh, a pet or maybe an animal you see on a trip. Um, those can make for great photos. Uh, here, Costi took a picture of a little white bunny is there an animal that you would like to take a picture of? This kind of picture is called a portrait. It can be of an animal or of a person. So here's a portrait of people. Um, we have portraits of people that can show them sitting, standing, doing an activity like swinging here. Um, photographs with people doing an activity can both capture their faces, but it can also show what they like to do and how they like to have fun. So try taking a picture yourself of someone doing something fun um, and remind them to smile for the camera. Okay. Another type of photograph is a landscape, uh, which is a picture of the world around you. Maybe it's the ocean like in Costi's picture here or it could be your house or backyard, um, somewhere interesting you find on your photography adventures. With this photograph, we can actually learn a technique here to make our own photos more interesting. Um, so Costi here uses what's called the rule of thirds in his photo. So let me put a grid over this one. We can figure that out, there we go. Um, so the pictures now you can see split up into three sections from top to bottom and three from left to right. See how the water in this photo fills up the bottom third of the photograph, can you see that? And then the sky fills up the other two thirds. Likewise, you can see this bird in the photograph is over here on the left third and the sun as well tends to be over there. And then the land is filling up this right third over here. Um, so this technique makes the pictures more interesting and it draws your eye into the different spots of the image. Um, the sky is more interesting than the water here. So Kasi kept more of the sky than of the water in his photograph. Um, so you can try this yourself. Try lining up the interesting part of your picture with one of these lines, like you can see with the bird in the photo. If that's what you wanna highlight, try to shift your picture a little bit there. Another thing that can make your photos really interesting is patterns and lines. So look around you. Can you see any interesting patterns or lines that would make a cool photo? This photograph of the inside of a boat has lines across the top, you can see here, 
has lines leading towards the back and then it has a line down the middle as well. Um, these are, lines are called leading lines um, and this is another photography technique. So see how the lines lead your eyes towards the back of the boat and the line down the middle draws your eyes from the top to the bottom. So next time you get your camera out, try this out yourself. Um, these can be lines formed by a street, buildings, even in nature. Okay. Up next, we have this patch of blueberries. See how Kasi got really close to these blueberries? Because he did that, you can see the berries and leaves really well. By taking a photo up close, you can show the details of something. So instead of staying farther back, try sometimes to get close to your subject and capture the tiny details that are hidden there. All right, lighting is very important to your photography. Uh, most of the time you wanna try for gentle light. So sometimes being inside or in the shade works better than being in direct sunlight uh, because in direct sunlight, people tend to squint their eyes. If you're outside, try to keep the sun behind you, like Costi did here in the photograph um, of a fisherman. Um, and if you're inside, you try to find a bright room, but not one where the sun's going to be uh, directly hitting the subject really brightly. So in this other photo here, you can see it is, it is more gentle light there. All right, we have a couple more tips for you today. Let's see, got some more lighting. Um, so this is another way to play with lighting um, if you try it out at different times of the day. Uh, so think about how you want your subject to look. Do you want it bright and cheery? If you do, maybe try taking it early in the morning. Do you want it more mysterious? Try taking a picture at night like Costi did here. This photograph was taken at night, which makes the lights on the street glow and makes us seem more mysterious than if taken during the day. All right. Um, angles are also a fun technique to play with. Um, if you um, try taking a picture from below your subject, you can change up how your subject looks. So see how big this lobster looks and how tall the fisherman is? That's because Costi took this photograph from below, looking up at the lobster and the fisherman. Um, so try taking a picture yourself from below. It can make uh, someone look taller, an animal look bigger, or just show a different side of the subject as well. And likewise, if you take a photo from above, it can show how high up you are. Here the fisherman looks small, um, surrounded by all the fish they caught. Taking a picture from above can make the object look small or far away, and it can show how high up you are. Um, now it's time for you to try out your new knowledge. Um, we have a scavenger hunt for you, which we will post um, below in the comments. You can print it out yourself. Um, but these are different things that you can um, try taking pictures of yourself. So animal, plant, building, person, landscape, and, and a pattern like leading lines, that sort of thing. Um, and then try taking a picture up close, uh, try taking one from above, and try taking one from below. Um, so again, we'll post the scavenger hunt below um, so you can try it out yourself. Um, and if you're near the museum today, please join us to try the scavenger hunt on campus. Uh, we'll have printed copies available um, and they have slight variations for things that you can try out uh, at the museum. And thank you for joining us today. And we will be back next week for more main stories, activities, crafts, and fun.